At 3.47 a.m., a second burst from Andromeda slammed Earth's magnetic field, compressing it by 2,000 kilometers. Detected across three continents, it's 50 times stronger than the first. AI systems failed to classify it. This isn't just a cosmic signal, it's an event, and Earth just felt the impact. The return signal, arrival of wave two. At 3.47 a.m. Eastern time, radio arrays near Manitoba, Canada, lit up with an alert unlike any in recent memory. The raw intensity was enough to trip safety thresholds. Within seconds, confirmation rolled in from observatories in New Mexico and Western Australia. All three instruments pointed to the same origin in the Andromeda galaxy, just like they had 18 months ago. But this time, this time was different. The burst wasn't just stronger, it was staggering. 50 times brighter than the first, sustained for a full three seconds. For any fast radio burst, that duration is nearly unheard of. Most fast radio bursts flash and vanish in milliseconds. This one stayed, and in doing so, it immediately rewrote expectations. Automated AI filters, trained on thousands of past events, couldn't categorize it. Classification systems simply failed. This wasn't just an anomaly, it was off the map. It didn't match any astrophysical signature in the system's memory. The detection wasn't quiet. The raw data stream flooded internal networks, forcing manual override. We thought it was a glitch, said Dr. Helena Cruz, systems operator at the Canadian Array. But three locations, simultaneous, that's not noise. The story begins here, not with a theory, but with a blinding three-second pulse from 2.5 million light years away. And in its wake, a pattern was reborn. A signal once written off as random now had a sibling. Something was repeating, and it wasn't just coincidence. Every rule of deep space radio says this shouldn't happen, said Cruz. And yet, it did. Ghost Echoes, revisiting wave one. The story of wave one begins on a cold morning, January 17th, 2024, marked in archives as FRB240117. At the time, it was just another entry in the growing catalog of fast radio bursts, short, bright, and easily forgotten. It lasted five milliseconds, carried no repeat pattern, and showed no standout traits. Astronomers logged it, published it, and moved on. But everything about that first pulse feels different now. When Wave 2 arrived in October 2025, Scientists reopened the data. This time, they didn't just study the radio signature, they pulled magnetospheric records, satellite telemetry, and ground-based readings. And buried in that archive, exactly eight minutes after the 2024 event, was a faint, unexplained flicker in Earth's magnetic field. At the time, it drew no attention. The blip was minuscule, a few nanoteslas of deviation on one of NOAA's polar monitors. But with hindsight, its timing was too perfect, the correlation too clean. It was as if Earth had flinched in response to something cosmic brushing past. It didn't fit the profile of a solar flare, said Dr. J. Kim of the Goddard Space Flight Center. No sunspots, no coronal mass ejection. Yet, there was this pulse right after the burst. What once looked like random noise now forms the first note in a pattern, a whisper before the shout. Two signals, 18 months apart, from the same Andromeda coordinates, forcing scientists to admit that this isn't coincidence. We always think the sky is silent unless it screams, said Kim, but sometimes it whispers, and now we're finally listening. And as researchers turned their focus to this new burst, one detail stood out above all others. It's polarization, the strange rhythmic twisting that no known source can explain. The Polarization Puzzle If brightness was the first shock, then polarization was the second. In radio astronomy, polarization refers to the twisting orientation of radio waves, usually messy, random, or at best slowly drifting. But the signal from Andromeda, this second wave, was doing something entirely different. It was flipping, cleanly, rhythmically, every 200 milliseconds. Not drifting, not chaotic, just flipping, as if something was tuning it on and off with mechanical precision. Across all three observatories, Canada, New Mexico, Australia, the same polarization pattern emerged. 
scientists were stunned. Nothing known in nature behaves like this. Magnetars, their polarizations wander. Pulsars, they can be sharp, but not this precise. Plasma lensing in interstellar clouds, it might bend and scatter polarization, but not flip it in a perfectly timed beat. AI systems flag the anomaly first. The filters weren't even looking for polarization signatures, yet they paused the classification pipeline because of unnatural ordering. The wave wasn't just strong, it was organized. It's not the power that scares us, said Dr. Amina Solano, a signal analyst from the VLA. It's the rhythm. Rhythm implies control. This wasn't just another cosmic flash, it was doing something, turning, flipping, repeating, and all that led to a more unsettling realization. Something this ordered might not be random at all. Earth's magnetic shield flickers. At 3.51 a.m., just four minutes after the burst's arrival, Earth's magnetosphere, our protective magnetic bubble, twitched. Instruments on board, GOES satellites recorded a sudden inward compression. The shield shrank by 2,000 kilometers, pushing closer to Earth than normal. At first, scientists assumed a solar flare was to blame, or maybe a coronal mass ejection. But solar monitors were silent. No flares, no eruptions. The sun was calm. Only one event matched the timing, the Andromeda signal. It was impossible. A radio wave, just energy in space, shouldn't be able to affect Earth's magnetic field. Radio waves don't carry enough momentum. They don't interact with planetary magnetic layers. Yet, the timing, the global consistency of the data, and the lack of other causes forced scientists to consider the unthinkable. We had no solar activity, no known particles incoming, nothing else in the space weather logs, said Lieutenant Mark Reyes, who monitors NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. And still, the magnetosphere responded. Was it coincidence? Was it some exotic interaction never before recorded? Or was the signal not just light, but something more? It felt like someone knocked on the door, Reyes said, and Earth reacted. What was once a cosmic curiosity was now a potential planetary interaction. This raised the scale of the event, from mysterious to dangerous. And if the wave could touch Earth's shield, then we had to ask, just how powerful was it? The energetic scale, incomprehensible brightness. The numbers don't lie. At peak, the signal strength hit 140 Janskys, measured directly at Earth's surface. That's not just high, that's unprecedented. For context, the brightest fast radio bursts ever recorded barely reach three Janskys. This wave was nearly 50 times stronger. Radio waves, like all light, fade with distance, following the inverse square law. So, if something this intense is reaching us from Andromeda, 2.5 million light years away, then the original energy at the source had to be mind-bending. Calculations show it released more radio energy in three seconds than our sun emits in an entire hour. That's not an exaggeration. That's math. The kind of output we only see in rare cataclysmic events, like neutron star collisions or hyperflares from magnetars. But even those don't match all the features. They're too fast, too random, too messy. There's no known source that checks every box. At book Stomby, said Dr. Kira Lennox, astrophysicist at Caltech. Power, structure, repetition, this shouldn't be possible, but it is. The more scientists ran the numbers, the more the scale became impossible to ignore. This wasn't just loud, it was off the charts, a true cosmic super event. And that led to the next question. Was it just energy or was it language? The hidden code, structured timing. What finally pushed this event beyond the edge of normal wasn't the brightness, it was the structure. Within the three second pulse, scientists detected timing clusters, tiny pulses within the wave. The main pattern, a 43 millisecond pulse, followed by 86 milliseconds of silence, then 172 milliseconds. Then it repeated, that's not noise, that's binary doubling, a signature of mathematical intention. Twelve clusters, each showing the same internal doubling. This wasn't just repetition, it was precision. The kind of rhythm you might expect from a machine, or a language. Natural phenomena don't repeat like this, not exactly, not down to the millisecond. Pulsars spin, but their intervals drift. Magnetars flare, 
but never in clean binary progressions. Even harmonic plasma echoes, a leading natural candidate, fall apart under this level of scrutiny. The breakthrough came from AI, not traditional software, but deep neural networks trained on pattern prediction. The AI flagged the doubling structure, noting that it exceeds randomness thresholds for natural events. It's like hearing a heartbeat in the static, said Dr. Ayan Malik, head of the AI team at MITRE Labs. You know it's not natural because it's too perfect. With that, the conversation shifted. From radio astronomy to cryptography, from observation to interpretation, the wave may not just be a burst, it might be a message. And suddenly, scientists weren't just looking at space, they were listening. Natural hypotheses under fire. In science, the first rule is simple. Assume it's natural, until it absolutely can't be. And so, following protocol, researchers race to find an explanation grounded in known physics. But, but one by one, every theory began to unravel. Could it be plasma wakefield acceleration? In theory, that process can create sharp bursts and even mimic rhythmic structures, but it requires extremely clean, controlled plasma environments, something nearly impossible on galactic scales, especially across interstellar space. What about supermagnetars, the most magnetic objects in the universe? Some models suggest they could release immense energy in cycles, but no supermagnetar has ever been observed doing this and none could explain the binary doubling or polarization flips. Some looked to black hole accretion flares, the idea that matter spiraling into a black hole near Andromeda's core could release episodic blasts. That might explain the energy, but not the regularity, not the precise timing clusters, and certainly not the Earth's magnetosphere reacting four minutes later. Even exotic ideas, orbital resonances, standing wave harmonics, intergalactic plasma lenses were tested. They could explain fragments of the signal, but none could tie all the pieces together. Three-second duration, precise polarization, binary structure, and geomagnetic impact. Every natural model collapses under the weight of the data, said Dr. Lena Voss, cosmologist at Cambridge University. We're at the edge of the known map, and everything past here is speculation. The harder scientists tried to explain the signal within the known universe, the more the mystery grew. And when the familiar breaks down, there are only two places left to look. Physics we haven't discovered, or intelligence we haven't met. Alien or physics, unknown, framing the options. This is where it gets uncomfortable. Scientists are trained to avoid big leaps, but the signal left no safe ground to stand on. If it's not explainable by natural buzzes, then we are left with two possibilities, both equally unsettling. First, it could be a window into unknown physics, a class of phenomena we simply don't understand yet, maybe quantum-scale gravitational instabilities, or matter interactions at Planck energy scales, something operating in a regime beyond current models. Second, it could be engineered, a signal sent not by chance but with intention. Structure, polarization, binary progression, rhythmic pulses, all are hallmarks of communication systems. At small scales, they're how we build radios. Could this be the same, but on a cosmic scale? But jumping to aliens is dangerous. Scientists use strict criteria, repetition, intelligibility, structure, and most of all, the absence of natural alternatives. This signal checks those boxes, but even then, the community is cautious. We're not saying this is contact, said Dr. Javier Rhodes, part of the SETI Institute's rapid response team. We're saying we've ruled out everything else, and what's left is deeply, deeply weird. Whether it's alien or something we don't yet have words for, the implications are the same. The signal is not just energy, it is information. And if that's true, then we are not just observers of the universe. We are now part of a dialogue. Predicting wave three, the clock ticks. Patterns in space are rare, repetition is rarer. But now, with two bursts separated by an 18-month interval, scientists are beginning to wonder, could this be a galactic clock? A heartbeat pulsing from Andromeda, marking time in silent, powerful bursts. The first pulse came in January 2024, the second in October 2025. 
If the cycle holds, the next could arrive in April 2027. And if it does, the pattern becomes more than coincidence. It becomes a schedule. Astrophysicists are racing to build predictive models. Some lean on ideas from magnet or storm cycles, where built-up magnetic stress releases energy in timed bursts. Others explore theories involving black hole feedback loops, where matter falling inward creates pulsed emissions. But both face the same issue. Neither explains the binary timing structure or the polarization flips. Meanwhile, the world's observatories are shifting strategy. Instead of waiting passively, they're now running around-the-clock monitoring of the Andromeda region. AI systems have been upgraded for real-time pattern recognition. The James Webb, FAST, LOFAR, and NIR-KAT arrays are all pointed at the coordinates, and plans are underway to use multi-wavelength follow-ups, combining radio, X-ray, and even gravitational wave detectors to capture every angle. We're not just observing anymore, said Dr. Sophia Patel, lead engineer at LOFAR. We're listening for the next tick. The next wave could come at any moment or never, but the possibility has reshaped priorities across astrophysics. And it raises the stakes. If this is a signal, wave three might hold more, more structure, more information, maybe even a key to understanding what's behind it all. Consequences for Earth, Science, and Civilization. Whether natural or artificial, the Andromeda signal has already changed the game. If it's natural, we've just uncovered a new kind of cosmic event, one that redefines our models of energy, magnetism, and interstellar communication. Textbooks will need rewriting, research fields will pivot, physics will grow. But if it's artificial, the implications are seismic. We might be witnessing our first confirmed sign of extraterrestrial intelligence. Not in the form of spacecraft, not through blurry images, but through data. Structured, powerful, intelligently patterned data. A message, maybe, or a beacon, or something we don't yet have the tools to understand. Governments are already responding. SETI, NASA, ESA, and multiple defense agencies are coordinating, not for panic, but for preparation. If signals like these can compress Earth's magnetosphere, what else could follow? Could future waves carry radiation, cause interference, trigger unforeseen side effects? We're not in control here, said Dr. Naomi Arden, policy advisor to UNESCO's Space Coordination Panel. But we can choose how we respond. And that response must be clear. Global monitoring, open data sharing, public transparency. This is no longer an isolated discovery. It's a moment for science, cooperation, and humility. Because whatever the signal is, be it a cosmic riddle or a galactic hello, we heard it, we felt it. And now the world is listening. Whether this is a natural phenomenon or an engineered broadcast, one fact is clear. Earth is no longer a silent observer in the cosmos. The second wave from Andromeda didn't just arrive. It touched our world. It bent our magnetosphere and it broke every model we trusted. If this is part of a sequence, Wave 3 could bring more than data. It could bring consequences. NASA's emergency briefings aren't just warnings. They're invitations to prepare. We are now part of a cosmic timeline, and the clock is ticking. This is not science fiction. This is now. This is real.